So now I'm going to do a layout on a new document just like you're going to do for this project and I've got two images up my beautiful picture of goldfish and then tabbed underneath it are the Ritz crackers and so I need to make a new document to house these two images. Um, the first thing I need to do is actually find out the scale and resolution of both of these images so I can construct an Im a new document that's the proper size. So first remember you can't trust what you see here. In fact, if you look, I'm looking at this picture at 25%. So a quarter of the actual size that it is on, for this monitor. So instead what I'm going to do is go up into image, image size, and take a look at the numbers. And what I've got here is an image that's 15.327 by 11.02. Now at this point, I am going, yes, going to do a little white lie by interpolating down. Because remember, this project can be a maximum of 20 inches in width. Um, if I put two 15 inch documents together, it'll be over 30 inches. So I need to size down. So I do have the resample button checked lying as it is. It is still necessary here. And thankfully I have the constraint proportions checked so that I don't stretch the image. And I'm going to go to the width and since I'm going to make a total of 20 inches in terms of the width of my new document, I'm going to bring this down to half that size to 10 inches. And when I do that, I want you to look up here. Um, this is kind of called the upstairs at the pixel dimension. So you really get a sense of what this resampling is doing. So right now it's 2299 pixels in width. And I'll bring this actual document size down to 10 inches and watch those pixel dimensions. So now it's 1500 pixels. So you can see that we've lost a lot of pixels, but in this case on purpose. And then the height of my image is now 7.19. And the reason that we don't have to worry about that is because we have that constrained proportions checked. And then you'll see that these two things are linked. So we're not stretching our image at all. So now I'm going to write down these sizes so that when I go to make the document, I remember. So it's 10 by 7.19 with a resolution of 150. And down here in this little pop-up menu, I have a little cheat sheet that tells me what to do um, for reducing my image, which I'm about to do, is to use the method by cubic sharper. So you can just read the little cheat quotes right here and it says best for reduction, which is what we're doing. And then click OK. And you'll see that the image shrank. Um, and that's because we've thrown out a bunch of pixels. So now let's go to the goldfish. So I'll click on the second, oops, first picture. And notice when I click between the two images that the layers palette is contextual to whatever image is activated. So when I click on goldfish, you see goldfish in the layers palette. And when I click on the Ritz crackers, you see the Ritz crackers. A lot of people think that there's a different layers panel for each image, but the layers panel just stays there. And then the icons or the little thumbnails are what change. So let's shift our size down image size in the goldfish. And again, we're going to resample. Don't tell 10 inches but I'm going to do it by cubic sharper. Okay, so now these are sized and ready to go. And now I'm gonna make the new document. And this is done like many other programs is it's under file new, like even Microsoft Word has the same action, file new. And a lot of people don't read what's going on here. You know, one of the most important things when you get a message within any software is to read the message actually. Who would have thought? So I'm gonna type in a title here. So in case I lose it somehow, I know where it's going. And you may find that whoever used this palette last was using pixels and this can throw people. So um, make sure that you 
just go to this little pop-up menu and choose inches. It's a lot easier for photographers to deal with. A lot of designers will work in pixels. And we are going to use a document at 20 inches. And height, when I use my um, notes here, is 7.193. So I'm going to make a document that's exactly the right size. And I want to match the resolution at 150. Now, if there were some other resolution, let's say 300, then my images would shrink to half the size. Or if I had a resolution of 72, my images are going to double to fit that grid of pixels. So it's important that you either match the resolution or know what effect that will have if you put one image in a different resolution image. And it's the background image that sort of sets the tone for the whole thing. You do want RGB color and most definitely you want 8-bit. Um, I can't print 16 or 32-bit. So you go to 8-bit. And the background color is going to be up to you. I, I actually suggest white, unless you have some reason you're going to pick a different color. There is transparent as well. Um, this one tends to freak people out. I think I'm going to make a transparent one just so you can see what it looks like. Let me click OK. This is transparent. And a lot of people this is disturbing to because see these checkers here? The computer can't really show transparency be unless we had a see-through computer monitor. So what it does instead is puts this checkerboard to alert you that this is a transparent background. And um, a lot of students will be like, I didn't draw those checkerboards. So if this bugs you, you'll get used to it though. I'm going to close that one and try a new one. New and it goes back to whatever your last thing was. White background this time. Those, those checkerboards are sometimes harsh to look at too. And I'm going to bring this document back in so you could see that the actual size is, I'm shrinking it down right now, um, is more horizontal. So we have like a very short but very wide document here. And remember in the video about these tabs when I said sometimes you're trying to bring other images in and these tabs aren't so helpful. I need to actually um, pull the document, the new document away. So I'm just grabbing the tab and pulling it so that I can actually get to my pictures. So maybe I'll float these behind the layers palette, bring this forward. And the other thing is, I see a lot of people who like to use the Move tool, which is located over here in the Tools palette, and just grab an image with the Move tool and drag it into the new document. I actually want to give you or teach you the habit of pulling the thumbnail, not the picture, but the thumbnail. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because I, I prefer this because you can see if you had multiple layers or you needed to flatten layers. A lot of times people won't look at their palette. So I'm just going to grab the thumbnail itself. It does the same thing. And as I drag it into the white space, you'll see when it hits, when it outlines in black. So as I bring it in, see when I'm not on it. And then when I go to the white document, that black outline means that I'm going to make it into this document. So there's the Ritz cameras, right? I'm sorry, why do I call them Ritz cameras? Ritz crackers. And then I'm going to click on my goldfish and see how my thumbnail changes here and drag the goldfish over. And then I'll take a look at this. And now I have my both my images in my document and in the next video, we're going to talk about how to lay them out.